Last year, MSNBC saw its ratings soar. The network's primetime lineup routinely finished second in the rankings, Fox News, of course, being number one with a bullet, and their president, Phil Griffin, who had made no secret that his objective was to overtake Fox News, boasted in November that they were closer to Fox than they had ever been. And it was in pursuit of this goal that MSNBC replaced The Ed Show with All In With Chris Hayes, trading a mean-spirited doofus for a more even-keeled dweeb. Well, guess what? It didn't work! Not only did MSNBC not get a ratings boost out of the changeup, but Chris Hayes' new show is actually doing worse in the ratings than the show it replaced. Last month, MSNBC actually dropped to fourth place among all the cable news networks, behind not only CNN, but headline news. And HLN isn't really even a cable news network. What's on HLN right now? We're in trouble. Do you think this is a good time to announce the sex of your baby? Look, it's a battery baby. Don't open her skin. Okay, well, that is disturbing on many different levels, but I'll bet you that woman has a better grip on reality than most of MSNBC's primetime lineup. Now, what could be causing this? Is All In with Chris Hayes really that much worse than The Ed Show? Well, consider this. Last week was not a good week for the Obama administration. They kept getting caught in lie after lie after lie. On Monday, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney was forced to acknowledge that what he had previously told reporters about when the White House first became aware of this malfeasance at the IRS was not exactly true. And in fact, the high-ranking White House officials knew about what the IRS was doing much earlier than Carney had originally said they had. And then you had the news breaking towards the end of the, the week media. that, contrary to what he had told Congress under oath, at a congressional hearing, Attorney General Eric Holder was involved in the potential prosecution of reporters for the press, whatever you want to call them, for leaks related to leaking information. So the Attorney General may have perjured himself. That's pretty significant. And yet, on that Friday, this was how Chris Hayes chose to lead off his show. This is from the A Block of All In with Chris Hayes on their May 24th broadcast. We begin tonight with a special segment dedicated to Republicans being jackasses. I wonder why almost nobody watches that show. For those of you who claim that Fox News is just a right-wing propaganda channel and that Fox News operates as an arm of the Republican Party, or that Fox News is somehow more biased than MSNBC? Find me one example, just one, where the lead show in Fox News' primetime lineup, that would be the O'Reilly Factor, just one case where Bill O'Reilly, on a day when the top news story is, hey, we've uncovered evidence that the Attorney General of the United States has perjured himself choose to lead off his program, devote the entire A-block of his program to, hey, here's some examples of Democrats behaving like jackasses. Just find me one example of a comparable thing on Fox News where somehow evidence is uncovered implicating a cabinet-level official or higher in a Republican administration in committing a serious crime where Bill O'Reilly has chosen instead to devote his entire A block to Democrats acting like jackasses. By the way, the examples Chris Hayes gave of Republican jackassery were first he played 
a clip of something Louis Gohmert said at a congressional hearing and then accused the congressman of something he didn't do, or at least that the clip did not depict. And then he did the same thing with a couple clips of Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett. And this is another thing that I've seen on MSNBC a lot that I never see on Fox News. I never see anyone on Fox News do this. So here's another challenge for those of you who hate Fox News or think it's more biased than MSNBC. Find me a case, just any example, where the host of a Fox News program plays a sound on tape and then claims seriously that the clip they just played shows something that it plainly doesn't. This is something I've seen MSNBC's on-air personalities do over and over and over again. I've shown you examples in some of my other YouTube uploads. It's a bizarre behavior, and I don't see it on Fox News. So if you can find me an example of that, then I'd much appreciate it. Now, I will say that Chris Hayes did come up with a genuine example of something that was actually real in his fourth example of what he called Republican jackassery, and it involved Senator David Bitter. But in this case, well, just watch. Moving on to Washington, where we find Louisiana Republican David Bitter engaged in his own bit of jackassery this week. That same David Bitter, who should know a thing or two about redemption and forgiveness and fresh starts, introduced a measure this week as an amendment to the Farm Bill that said to people convicted of certain crimes, once you're paid your debt to society and you're done serving time, I want to punish you some more by making you ineligible for food stamps for life. So David Bitter gets to receive forgiveness from God and his wife and put his transgressions behind him, but that doesn't mean he wants to offer other people the same chance. Now, if Chris Hayes wanted to inform his viewers, wanted his viewers to have a fair and accurate understanding of all the pertinent facts relevant to the story he was presenting here about Senator Vitter and this amendment, then he would have gone into more detail, don't you think, about the specific crimes. He said certain crimes, people convicted of certain crimes, but he didn't tell us which crimes. So I had to do a bit of research on my own and found that the amendment offered by Senator Vitter would only prevent convicted murderers, rapists, and pedophiles from receiving food stamps. What's more, no senators objected to it! The Senate approved the amendment by voice vote without any objection from any other senators. Now I know that a lot of people have been falsely accused of, and a significant number have been wrongfully convicted of murder and rape. I don't know of anyone who's been wrongfully convicted of pedophilia or any sexual assault on a child, but there could very well be a case. There could be many cases like that, and that is a legitimate issue to address in regards to this. But that's not what Chris Hayes wanted to talk about. That's not what he devoted his segment to. He just wanted to hold up David Vitter, and only David Vitter, not the entire U.S. Senate, not all of the U.S. Senators who supported this amendment without objection, but to just call David Vitter a jackass. Now, David Vitter did cheat on his wife with prostitutes, allegedly, but cheating on your wife? Not quite as bad as murder, rape, or pedophilia. Maybe Chris Hayes has a different view. I happen to think that those things are a little bit worse. Finally, Chris Hayes offered one more example of a Republican being a jackass, as he called it, but... This wasn't just uh, Republicans being jackasses. This was, in Chris Hayes' words, Some real top-notch jackassery. Okay, well, so far in this segment, Chris Hayes is 0 for 4. Let's see what he saved for last. Tea Party Republicans do not want to even wait for the next debt ceiling hostage crisis. We're ready to hit the debt ceiling. They want to have it right now, and they are prepared to do battle with whomever stands in their way, whether Terry Reid and the Democrats or their own Republican colleague and one-time standard bearer, John McCain. Senator from Arizona urged this body to trust the Republicans. Let me be clear, I don't trust the Republicans. And I don't trust the Democrats. And I think a whole lot of Americans likewise 
don't trust the Republicans and the Democrats because it is leadership in both parties that has gotten us in this mess. Okay, so this is in a category of both of its own. And pray tell, what would that category be, Chris? This is highly effective, strategically deployed jackassery. It's part of one of the most fascinating political stories de developing this week, which is the civil war breaking out among Republicans. Okay, here we go again, trying to manufacture some made-up civil war among Republicans, blah, blah, blah. I can understand why Democrats are trying to manufacture a civil war among Republicans, but here's the thing. Chris Hayes might want to consult with his superiors at the DNC because I don't see how just singling out one Republican and calling him a jackass furthers their attempt to create discord among Republicans. But in any event, unlike other shows where the host actually brings on people to offer opposing viewpoints and even to tell him maybe why he's wrong, Chris Hayes chose to bring on as guests in this segment this lady and Rachel Maddow, who for some reason in this segment went by the name Steve Kornacki. That's kind of weird, but this is another thing. Show me one example of anywhere on Fox News where you have the host of a program just spending an entire segment engaging in purely partisan ad hominem attacks all directed at members of one particular party and then bringing on like-minded fools to reinforce the fantastical delusions he's been engaging in and perpetuating. I've never seen that on Fox News. Maybe you have. Maybe you can direct me to an example. That's my third challenge to those of you who don't like Fox News, but like MSNBC. So you've got three things here, three examples. One, ignoring the top story of the day, which clearly implicates the Attorney General or some other cabinet-level official, and instead trying to devote an entire segment, an entire A block of your show, this is specifically Bill O'Reilly because he's in the same time slot as Chris Hayes, to examples of, in his opinion, Democrats behaving like jackasses. Uh, two, the video thing, where they play a video and then pretend that it depicted something that it obviously didn't. And then three, finally, engaging in purely partisan name-calling and then bringing on like-minded idiots to reinforce your whatever. Show me any example of any one of those things on Fox News, because I've never seen it. If you can post a video response or just explain it in a comment. I'd prefer a video response, but also please check out my blog, rightwinggenius.blogspot.com. Follow me on Twitter and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And as always, don't mess with the right wing genius.